Hello, everybody. Welcome back to our second mural art series, Art and Activism. Today, we're going to be talking about poetry. Is that the secret language of revolutionaries? Or better yet, let's make that a statement. Poetry is the secret language of revolutionaries. And today, I will be your moderator, Ginger Rudolph, and I have two amazing guests with me today. I have Ursula Rucker and Nina Lyrispectball, who we all know. And if you don't, they are poets, they are lyricists, they are writers, they are all around Renaissance women. And they're gonna tell us a bit more about what they do as we take this hour to start talking about tending spaces, about how we manifest our lives, and how we define poetry. So welcome, ladies. How are you? Great. It's good to be here. Thank you, Ginger. I'm going to turn my volume up a little bit. <laughs> I'm excited to have you both here because you guys are Philly staples. Um, it's, it's an honor, truly. And I know that I really am not doing justice to the careers that you guys have had for a very long time, but I thought it probably would be more apropos to allow you to tell us what you do here in Philadelphia, what you do as a career, and uh, what projects you guys are working on right now. All right, you got it. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, um, yeah, what, what, I, what I would say, you know, because this is like, we, we, we just have a short amount of time, and we're going to say whatever we can say in the short amount of time, but Google it, John, is what you need to do. Um, you all know how to do it, right? Every, everybody's adept at all the machinery and whatnot. So Google these Johns right here. And um, yeah, you'll, you'll, you, you, you're going to find some stuff. It's going to be fun. You could go down. Yeah, you could, you could spend a whole lot of time. Um, but yeah, you know, so many, I, I've been thankful to still keep working on projects through this wild, crazy, bizarro world time we're in right now. Um, and uh, of course, and I think we're going to talk about it uh, in this conversation, how important artists are uh, in general, but how pretty much everyone should know that right now. Uh, if you didn't know it before, then you know it now. Mm -hmm. Because when everything went dark in the beginning, you know, artists were really uh, the first people to come forward and, and still keep giving, put a, hey, come on, come on, keep your head up, let's keep going. Yeah, you know, we got to keep doing this. And, figuring out ways we all had to figure out ways so um been been grateful to be doing a lot of those virtual uh virtually made projects um to keep the morale going and um and talk about what's really happening um george floyd etc 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 all right so hers is being mad modest <laughs> so i'll do a little of hers and i'll do some of mine as well so uh, Ursula is uh, a Philly native and just worldwide legend. She's well known across uh, the world for her powerful words, her delivery, uh, the way she shows up, the things that um, that she chooses to speak about, like love, life, culture, uh, humanity, beauty, all of those wonderful things. Um, she also is going to tell us a little more about her house music career, you know, and how that plays its role in art and activism. Um, she's had her own mural here in North Philly near my, my place. Um, she's, of course, a lot of people who didn't know her before were introduced to her by way of The Roots. Um, I know that was one of my first mm -hmm. introductions when I was back in Baltimore, not quite in, high, uh, in, co in college, I think, high school, college, something. And I heard La Stella Vi, and that was it. I was just in love from then. Um, super sister extraordinaire. What are you um, doing? She's taking my job. No, I just, uh, that's what she's doing. No, <laughs> wait, no, wait, wait. Ginger, you just handed the intros to us. <laughs> Ursula told everybody to Google her. I'm trying to hold John. I'm trying to hold John. You're John, supposed to you know. be talking about yourself. <laughs> I'm over here feeling guilty like shit. Now I got to do it. Don't be, because honestly, when you get to a certain point in your career where there's too many things to name, it is okay to be like, go on, get on that search engine. Because there's stuff you probably forgot that you've done. You've done so much work. And I think that brings it full circle to the idea of arts and activism. And I will get into my background in a moment. Just like when you live that life, when you live this life, there are things you'll forget about because your spirit has a yes. You have a yes in your spirit for all things that are going to enact social change will be a catalyst towards that same thing. So I like this, though. I like this. <laughs> so, this is, 
You are off and what you say? A yes in your spirit? Okay. <laughs> yes, a yes in your spirit. I'm telling you. Um, and it just aligns with your purpose. And I think that that really helps lay off the path. So I'm originally from Baltimore. I've literally now been in Philadelphia half my life, actually more than half. So it actually outruns Baltimore at this point. So I'm officially like a Charm City John. I think yeah, I'm on no. a- No, what more could you ask for? Charm City John, yeah. Uh, Stacey, 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 like that Charm one. John. Yes, um, so a lot of uh, the work that I've done over time, I think just has aligned with just the liberation of all people, right? And so I look at like marginalized communities, people of color, um, the LGBTQ community, um, just a number of us that have been pushed at the margin. So that ideal, led me to certain work. Um, so I, I went to Temple for Temple University for film and African-American studies. So a lot of my papers um, were always about the images of Blacks in the media. So that gave me everywhere from Oscar Michaud, you know, at the origins of Blacks, um, you know, in cinema, all the way up to like our recent folk. Um, so from that double major, it moved me into different work. Um, I found out about a group called Pass Up. Um, Pan-African um, studies group, and I'm not even going to pretend um, to to fudge the last three letters. I'm going to do that justice. I know someone listening can give me the acronym. Um, and we had a march, and we shut down Broad Street, and we formed a huge circle. And I was handed the megaphone, and I was asked to do a piece that I wrote called "God Underscore Less America" or "Patriotism by Numbers." And that's the for me the clearest mark of the beginning of my intentional art as activism. Uh, from graduation, um, I met an amazing woman named Ava at the time. She had a group called Affirm, the African American Film Festival Releasing Movement. Again, aligning those two uh, backgrounds at Temple University Film and African American Studies. Um, we were helping to release uh, films by African American filmmakers at the time, which has now been further brought into women filmmakers um, and marginalized communities and through Array. Um, but then I also met a woman named Beverly and I continued to work through Black Girls Rock uh, with my, you know, particularly my writing prompts are where art as activism came into play and we can dig into that a bit later. Uh, I have a couple of murals through mural arts, um, one in North Philly and one in South Philly that I was uh, very blessed to be a part of. Uh, we're working on the Emerge campaign, which I'm sure we'll get into where we discuss uh, both the pandemic and what it means to be Black in the time of the pandemic, um, looking at the compounded issues around health disparities as well as um, racism, um, the deep sea racism that just permeates every corner. Um, aside from that, I have a background in teaching, I think self, but unconventionally, um, and I'm working on a couple other projects as well. I'm interpreting the Breathe Act right now into poetry, um, and I am, and that's brought forth by the March for Black Lives. Uh, and the Center for Cultural Power asked me to do that. And just a number of different things. I don't want to bury the lead. I don't know if that's the right term for that, but I don't want to front load so much. But uh, when I look back, a lot of my work is deeply aligned with moving the culture forward, liberating all peoples, specifically historically oppressed peoples. Um, and so that we can just be free out here, walking down the streets, breathing easy, you know? See, this is why I said Renaissance women. I'm like, this is... Yeah, girl, this, that would have been three pages of me like turning a page and, <laughs> and. Let's get it popping. We got stuff to talk about. We do, we do. But I think the first thing that we kind of agreed on is that we were going to try, try to define what poetry is or how we're going to speak about poetry today. Sure. So if I, if I can jump in, um, I actually was doing a little bit of research beforehand and I found a really great working de definition of art activism, um, artistic activism. So the Center for Artistic Activism defines it as a dynamic practice combining the creative power of the arts to move us emotionally with strategic planning of activism necessary to bring about social change. So in short, creating art that moves people forward and inspires them to make change or join the movement. What you want to kick in there or so? You did your homework, huh? <laughs> your homework is in your spirit. You got this. <laughs> you got to show off and whatnot. I'm just trying to be like you, Earth. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I, I think the great thing about poetry is like, Look, I got the drums behind me. Oh, it's not the drums. Somebody's doing some construction, but it sounded like I was like, mm, 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 mm. I like that. 
um, it, it's, it's that is super undefinable to me, you know, um, it's the magic in it that makes it what it is to me, how you can, you know, take language, but I guess it's the language, right? Yeah. It's, the, it's the language that is, yes, yeah, the language that's the, that's the meat, you know, the, the, the kind of like, this thing that holds the magic, you know, these words, this thing you can do with words and how you grow to love language. And then, you know, once you figure out your place within that, um, how you learn your, to, to wield or, or use that magic within, within this, this place that you're, you're creating with it. Um, so like if you merge activism with it, um, you know, that, that gives a whole new, element you know so like when I started I wasn't you know like I was always kind of fiery um also being a temple grad journalism um uh, degree and always kind of you know questioning everything to you um <laughs> <laughs> I had to get it in there gotta get it in there I thought about doing it with you and I was like no nah, no nah, be good so thank you <laughs> um but yeah you know I had to f figure that out myself I had to oh wait a minute you know what I'm saying? Like I can actually merge these two and it just kind of happened organically. And um, I didn't even really want it at first. You know, I was kind of afraid of it because yes, yeah, it's, it's a responsibility. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, now I would never get rid of it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I would just, you know, add to that in terms of you asked us to divide, you know, poetry. I think it is that movement, that intentional movement inside of words, whether the movement takes place through your wordplay and your flow or by the subjects you're hitting on in a way that they invoke something in the audience. So I think poetry is largely, like you said, undefinable. So like defined by the person that writes it, but also when you, I think it's when you make that switch over to say this belongs to me and I belong to it and it's a profession and it's not a hobby and it's very worthy as a hobby. You can be a poet with that as a hobby, but when it comes into a space where you include it in your walk in life, I think that's the kind of poetry that we're talking about tonight. It's interesting you say flow because that was one of the things I was thinking about the last time we were talking is like, how do the two of you find your flow and find your rhythm for a project? Like, I can't imagine that it's always the same, but I'm wondering like what space you put yourself inside of in order to create that magic. Yeah, I mean, for me, um, the, the most recent project I was working on, uh, like I said, uh, the Center for Cultural Power asked me to interpret the Breathe Act, which is in, in one word reparations, you know, just detailed into four sections. It's beautifully written. It is a big piece of work. And uh, for that process, I combed through, studied top to bottom research. And then for me, I just translated lines according to what I knew stuck with me and that could be pulled forth because it couldn't be tackled in just one poem. Um, and then I put on one song on repeat. So I usually write to instrumentals if I am gonna write um, intentionally with a deadline. So for, for this one is a favorite song called Ruler Rebel by Christian Scott Atunde Adjua. And it is the most amazing song. And it just had the right energy for what I was trying to tap into. So I just threw it on repeat on Spotify um, and I just started to write. And for me, sometimes a line will come to me. Sometimes an intro will come to me. To me sometimes just word wordplay because the the name lyricspect isn't just something for fun it's something i feel like i really embody in terms of my approach which is that i love to play with language the dictionary was my favorite book growing up and every time i learned a new word i found a way to put it in my work so i'm building my vocabulary as well as the audience's vocabulary and having retention for what i've just learned while educating myself and the audience so when I write, it's just uh, layer on top of layer. And Urs and I were talking about this offline, you know, talking about layers and approach and how there's something for everyone at every level. If you hear it one time, you might catch 50% of the implications. If you hear it again, another 20% after that, or depending on what you've read or your personal lived experience, you identify with the piece in an entirely different way. And we talked about coded language too, Urs, where, you know, some things are just colloquial or you have to know about it to know what we're saying, but it flows as regular words and it doesn't detract or distract from the piece, 
but it's just an extra little nugget of something sweet in there. So my approach really is to layer in as much as possible um, without trying too hard, right? Like I'm not trying to put every single word I know to around with it, just to say, I know these words. Um, everything comes with intention uh, and meaning behind it. And then I run it over and over and over again. And as of late, I've been recording Mm -hmm. And then as I go for my walks, I'll play the poetry back and I'll spit with it until I get the, the timber and the flow and the, 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 the tempo down. Yeah. It's like, so <laughs> I'm like, how do I phrase this? Because what's interesting to me is that you said coded language and I'm not asking us to break that down. People can look that up for themselves like, to understand what that really is. But I've noticed that sometimes if you're speaking to someone who doesn't understand that, then they think that the words that you're saying aren't really words. And I'm wondering if you come across that with any of your projects, like, do you think you've ever gotten turned down for projects because people really don't understand what you're saying because it's more of a cultural thing? Look at Ursula's face like, what? I, oh, I yeah. wish. I <laughs> wish. You know, not necessarily turned down, but some, I mean, I've been invited and then uninvited, you know? I, mm -hmm. I have, have a couple of those stories where people like, oh, you know, at first, if they, they didn't really do their homework, and somebody invited me and they were really excited, did all the work, and then took it to the, you know, administration or whatever. And, and they're like, oh, wait a minute, hold up. Oh, she, she radical. Wait a minute. <laughs> you know, um, I think that is so pretty yeah. radical, right? That kind of like fits into the theme of what we're talking about, because once you start using coded language, you're speaking to a very, very particular sect of people. You know, you know exactly who you're speaking to. I think the message is for them to understand. You're not going to take your time to break that down. That will break up your rhythm. That will break your flow. So... <laughs> Yeah, but I think also uh, probably Ursula, you much like me, I pepper in the coded language. Like it's just sitting there for you to discover mm. if, it, if your ear picks up on it. Um, but I write in layers where there's like a poem inside of a poem. And I would venture to say the same thing about Ursula. You know yeah, I mean, I mean and, and coded language comes in all different, like this isn't like, oh, there's just like one code, um, one uh, alphabet or whatever. Like it's, there, there are various, codes you know to speak in and just depending who you are where you're from what your experience is um you know how it determines how many codes you're going to be speaking in you know um and but i wanted to speak to the the the, the also the question about how how we begin to work on projects because i love that question it's an excellent question and i love nina's answer um i i i heard that as how you know do a do you begin to work on a, like a collaborative project, which I think is super important to talk about because, you know, to work insularly and personally as an artist is one challenge, you know, um, to work collaboratively is something you have to learn as an artist, especially if you, if you, if you've been, you know, going along being a lone wolf, which I was, you know, very much for a long time, kind of really being a lone wolf. And, um, and so when I had to start really collaborating on like, live shows or recorded projects or even better because i love you know just I'm, I'm actually getting my dream you know my dream is one of my dreams was that i could take this art and do as many things with it as possible you know merge it with as many different forms of art and other things <laughs> as possible and that's what's happened in my life and i value the um importance and um profoundness in collaboration you know there, there's just there's an art in collaborating in itself you know it teaches you so much so yeah you know like um when i i just try to listen when i begin a project just listen and gain as much as i can and then just flow with the organics you know like get the get the details not too many though because yeah it's you a know, fun line I, yeah yeah, because it, it usually unrolls, right, Nina? Like, it, even if you like, everybody's different. Some people need all the details, like, I mean, like, to the fine tooth comb. I need the details, and then I need to step away from the details, and then I need stuff to seep in organically as we start to do the damn thing. And that's when the magic happens. And I love that process. I don't ever want to stop collaborating. Yeah, yeah. So how do you guys feel like that's going within Philadelphia? Because I feel like we started talking about what what we 
I guess like the creative community inside of Philadelphia, like who we're able to work with, who we're able to learn from. How's that going for you guys? Um, well, for me, since since I've been here, um, I've been trying to hit the ground running. So I, I worked with a lot of different institutions in Philadelphia. And one thing I've heard people say consistently from other places is that the creative community, not simply the poetry community, but the creative community is close knit here. You know, a lot of people have the overlapping of friendships. I mean, much like in so many different movements throughout the world and throughout the US, you know, their comrades, you know, their friends and their colleagues at the same time. So I've, you know, been able in the distant past uh, to work with Congresso, to work with Asian Arts Initiative, Art Sanctuary, Opera Philadelphia. I think that um, in terms of collaboration, that's worked really well. I think I'm right there with Ursula that I am, I, I consider myself more of a lone wolf as well. I've been connected to groups um, that I've loved so much and I've enjoyed those experiences, but collaboration can be challenging. And so for me, collaborating with institutions has been more um, fruitful, I'll say, uh, in terms of someone might know my work or know what I bring. They have a need fulfilled and they give me enough room to be myself, right? One of my ideal collaborations um, that, that is just a match made in heaven is with uh, James Claiborne at the African American Museum. Like we just work together really well. There's a lot of like artistic freedom um, and how we approach each disruption in the series. Um, and that's the title of the series that we have with AMP. Um, and then even uh, doing the work at the um, Philadelphia Museum of Art, you know, Sarah Moyne, um, you know, working with her was a dream as well. In terms of working one-on-one -on -one with other artists, I think we have to really kind of know, be comfortable with and have respect for each other's work. All three of those things gotta be happening mm -hmm. um, because I do think, and I think Ursula feels the same way, this is spiritual work. I allow myself to be a vessel and I can't align with everybody's message. Um, and so I'm very particular about, you know, collaborating. And sometimes it gets uncomfortable to have the conversation that something doesn't align with, with who you are and who you're trying to be in the world. Um, but I think that goes right back to, you know, we all have different views of like what activism is or what our outcome is for the freedom and liberation of all people, including and especially black and brown people. We have different ways we want to get there, you know, so that next person might be about liberation too, but they, their means might be different than mine. Um, and it's not to say that we can't work together and come together, but if someone's work isn't aligning, if something isn't feeling right in my spirit, I don't collaborate. I just will let it fall. Right. But in terms of feeling it out, I think organic is the best way to, to move through that work too. Or yeah. Thanks. Jennifer. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Nina. Uh, Ginger, if you would allow me to just pick up, because I want to, you know, show people what, what the, that the connectivity is real and that, um, you know, while we're talking about collaboration and projects and whatnot, the, the way that I came, came to know Lyrispec is from seen, not heard, right? Am I, am I right? We're at the Rotunda. Was yeah. that the Rotunda? See, but you're, you're in seen, not heard, right? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think so. Uh, Mayori's film on women in hip hop, are you? I, I don't know if I am. I'm, I might be an extra. But I don't know. <laughs> you have a cameo. <laughs> I might have a cameo. It's so it's been so long. But yeah, um, go ahead. I thought it was that. But anyway, yeah. But we met out, met met in person outside the rotunda. But I just feel like everything we're, we're all connecting. And when you talk about the community here, um, like it's real. You know, uh, it's um, you know, if you can really um, uh, you know, accessing it hasn't always been. Yeah, with artists, artists get weird, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but once you once you get into your space, right? You get into that right space. These people like James Claiborne and um, and Nina and, and me, and there there are just such a just oh my god, so many people, so many um all ages. It's multi generational. Yeah, it's a uh, you know we all learn from each other. We all work together. We invite each other. Yeah. On, to work together so we can all have some kind of cooperative um, creativity and economics going on because we support mm -hmm. each other, hold each other up. I mean, that's my dream of a lifetime is to yeah. only be able yeah. to just create opportunities yeah. for uh, us artists and, and workers for the people um, uh, and all that, you know, to, to, 
to do our thing, you know, and make a living yeah. and make a way and, uh, and make ways for other people and help people and heal people and keep it, just keep the circle going and going and going. Yeah. And that's all I want to do. No, and Earth, the perfect example is the Emerge campaign. That was a collaboration, you know? We got to write our own pieces, but do you want to tell the people a little bit more about kind of what we did in the process? I mean, we could tag team it. You could, you could. <laughs> You're like, don't be giving me no homework. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm like, no, that's, this, I, I really thought about it. I'm like, no, Nina should take it. Nina should just start this off. So the, um, the Emerge campaign is through Mural Arts for everyone. Um, listen, I also just want to say hi to y'all. Thank y'all for being here. Oh, yeah. Um, What's up, y'all? Yeah, yeah. So for those that don't know, um, the Emerge campaign is currently running. It was largely running in July. It's now in the poster phase where we're repasting posters around Philadelphia, but we were originally tapped, myself, Ursula Rucker, Isis the Savior, um, Freeway, and uh, Amp Brown and Guild members were all brought in um, to create uh, PSAs about around the pandemic. It was just about the pandemic in the beginning, like, you know, like just getting Philly to mask up, let's be safe. Then the protests started popping off. And so many of us online were just deeply aligned on the weekly call. You know, I know ISIS was one of the first to say like, nah, nah, we need to uh, incorporate, you know, what's happening and what's going on. So she did that. Urs was like, yup. I was like, folks, so. <laughs> like we were all on the same page when it came to, we can't speak about one thing without speaking about another. Mm -hmm. And as artists that had this particular platform, because, you know, for those that are, you know, tuning in from other um, states and cities, Mural Arts has a big level of influence throughout the city of Philadelphia and is also pretty well funded. When there's not money in other places, there's usually some money from your arts. So having that opportunity, when so many people didn't have access to platforms, we felt the responsibility to make sure that we were speaking about the movement for Black Lives as well, um, making sure that we used our platforms responsibly um, in the space that we were given. And we created 30 seconds to one minute uh, campaigns on just what it means to be, you know, of color, Black, brown people in America in the midst of a pandemic. So my first line is fighting for our lives in the midst of a pandemic. So to bring about awareness that, yeah, we're all in this together, mm -hmm. but <laughs> are we? Um, <laughs> and, and what are the other things that, that a certain group of us face disproportionately more um, than other groups? And so that was a collaboration in the sense that we had a weekly think tank as well as one-on-ones with our mentees. And then we all created our own pieces in different voices, but with the same um, outcome and goal in mind. That was excellent, yo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I'm sorry. I forgot I was moderating for a second. I'm like, that is okay. But you know what? That, that does kind of make me think about the two things that the both of you have mentioned to me quite a bit, and that's about supporting the sisterhood, right? And then also within this community, within this circle, a, a good way to strengthen us to make everybody stronger was to have a Black art critique. And I did not want to forget about that because I wanted to really talk about that because you guys were very impassioned about that the last time we spoke. Um, yes. So, you know, like at, at Temple is where I learned about Black critique of Black art, you know, and really studied it um, and built a, you know, kind of like yearning for it, a compassionate version of it, a, con a continued version of it. Um, th this is when I studied was happening really around the time of the Harlem Renaissance. Um, Alan Locke, you know, um, just so many others that I, that I read about us, us talking about our art, where we come from, where we're coming from, understanding the black experience uh, on many levels and holding our, holding our art important and dear. And, uh, you know, being honest with each other about um, you know, really, really uh, giving good critique and, and suggestions and encouragement uh, amongst each other and, and having that be a real culture. And I don't really know, um, and, and maybe, maybe I just don't, you know, maybe I just don't know because like, you know, I have four sons and I've been busy um, <laughs> and, and, and swinging these swords to, to help, you know, to help the people out here. Um, but yeah, I, I don't, I don't, I don't personally feel, I don't mean in just writing. I mean, like, you know, all across the board with black art, uh, black critique of black art and, um, 
And you yeah. were saying too, that it, it like helps create a standard, um, you know, just a standard of excellence as well. Like not so much to be elite, but creating that standard of making sure, not even making sure, but being mindful that somebody's listening to your work and you're going to be held accountable for the work that you put forth on behalf of the black community or as a person of color. So I love that idea that you were talking about these, um, this, 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 this culture of critique, right? Not criticism, not negative, not bashing, not cancel culture, but critique. And I think it's really important that we make those separations, right? Because at a time like now, Earth and gender, you know, where people get canceled for saying the wrong thing, looking the wrong way, dating the wrong person, um, critique, I think, is a very important role when it comes to the artist and the artists that should be held accountable. Um, I think that unfortunately, our society, the United States especially, has cultivated this, you know, instant gratification, this put me in front of the camera, I'll say all the buzzwords and I'll have the look down, but not really be about that in my heart, right? Um, and there are imposters in every area of, you know, art, right? And uh, so yeah, there's imposter syndrome when you really are worth it. And then there's just straight up imposters looking for a spotlight. And I think that you have to call it what it is or else you won't be able to know that like a Maya Angelou is a Maya Angelou if you're just giving everybody a gold star and like stroking their back and telling them they get a good job, you know? Yeah, yeah, that and yes, like as you were talking, I, I was thinking like when I when I think when I talk about like black critique of black art, it's just another another level of black love and black care. You know, like we're all trying, we 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 are in we are in the midst of trying to figure out how we can live out here with these people that mean us harm, <laughs> that mean us no good. You know, with all this time and this system of meaning us harm and meaning us no good, and now you know. Um, yeah, we're like, you know, many of us, we, I mean, Nina and I, we, we, we do this, you know what I'm saying? But like so many other people, new people are becoming aware and awake. And so new conversations are being had or conversations are being um, uh, resuscitated. You know, they, they, they've been had, but it lost kind of momentum because it's hard to like get, get through to people. Okay, so now it seems like it's a, might be, even in, the, in this hard ass, time you know some things are easier to 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 get across now because people are more aware of it um and focused on it so i that's why i brought up this idea of black critique as a means of furthering black care black love black eye on black life you understand what i'm saying black eyes on black life black hearts on black life uh, and our experiences and the things that we create from our experiences, like, yo, later for y'all telling us how we going to do us anymore. Yo, I mean, and, and that kind of like falls into what we said we were like going to talk about tend into spaces, but I think that is, you know, wrap that up, Ursula, that is. I'm so serious. Look, I started <laughs> a hot flash. Don't get me sweating up in here. <laughs> Yeah, you're right, Earth. It's about being self namers and self definers. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's also and it's also about and it's also about arts organizations and entities or what have you, like mural arts, welcoming, not being afraid to welcome black artists, black stories, uh, black um, views and, and ideas and perceptions of things and uh, put 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 it out here and like let's all, but not in a way where it's like oh it's a puppeteer it's like no we're all supporting each other because you know that happens right nina you know yeah. what I'm saying? that happens and like we like as you as you grow and you and you practice your art more and more you get a feeling for when that's happening and it's a weird ass feeling you know when you like want that opportunity because you gotta eat hmm. you know what i'm saying and as a black artist and also a black artist who does activism uh, and you're a woman and whatnot. And um, so, you know, you have to really keep your wits about you. And we don't agree to everything. So if you think we do, you're incorrect. Because just because artists, you know, are hungry and we need, you know, we, we got, um, you know, we got some self-respect. <laughs> and um, yeah, absolutely. Right? you know what I'm saying? And, and, and like, I don't think that gets talked about enough. The gigs that we turn down the gigs that we don't do because we have, you know, like a certain level of how, you know, like how we want to do things, how we approach and we, um, 
don't compromise on that. And we miss out on the, well, not miss out, but we don't get the money that we need. We do say, oh no, we can't do that. And then we sit there and like, oh shit, how am I going to, you know, pay this bill or whatever now? So yeah, that's, that's a real thing. So let's add that to the list because that's the one thing that I didn't want to forget about because I knew we were going to take this all the way to the Q&A. We wanted to give people tips on how to really do this life. So let's add that to manifest in this life is respecting your art. You know, um, and I think that we did have a huge conversation about when you should blow your own horn, when you should know how good you are um, and how that comes into what you ask for, the projects that you turn down, the money that you make. You know, um, and I'm hoping that we can start to identify the things that people shouldn't do when it comes to their art so that they can walk away with something, um, you know, just to have some like learning steps, some baby steps, building a foundation. It's wisdom. Sure. It's called wisdom. Learn it early as you can. <laughs> it's the most valuable thing ever. But that learned wisdom comes from people like you and Nina who have been in the game for a very long time, who have taken those blows and understand how this works. You know, we can't expect that somebody just coming in, right, is going to know how this goes down. We've taken the blows, but we've also learned how to listen, you know, and mm -hmm. take, yeah, take that, take that loving, uh, encouraging critique, you know, and it may not be e easy at first, but like something like that, but we, we've learned how to listen. We've learned how to listen. That is so important. If you do not learn how to listen, yeah, uh, there'll be a lot of things you don't know how to do. Yeah, and, and I was thinking um, along those same lines, you know, for those that are looking to walk this path, you know, um, to use their art as an activist tool or just those listening that are looking to be involved or get involved, I always tell people, and I got just such a great message from a sister friend of mine. She basically said there are many front lines. So start from your place of experience and your sphere of influence, right? So when you're looking at whether it's creating poetry or for those who just want to get active and be a part of this different movement, it's very much about starting with what you can, what you can touch and see. Start with yourself first. Check yourself. See where your belief systems are. Like what's making sense to you, what's not? Because we also have to be independent thinkers. We have to be individual thinkers because even though, you know, um, you know, what, what's the phrase is, um, it's, it's escaping me, but it's um, like uniformity, not com without conformity, right? So we can all be a part of this movement, but bring our individual gifts. Uh, so as an artist, if certain things don't align with what you're about, you don't just have to go along uh, with it just because that's in the list of things we say we're doing and things that we want. There are lots of ways to join the movement. So I would say, you know, start locally, start with yourself, start with your household. Um, in terms of like creating, be about the work. First decide that you wanna do it if you wanna do it, right? Like no one should make you do anything, specifically when it comes to things where we, where passion, authentic passion is very much needed, as well as the ability and a desire to study and read. I'm not saying you gotta read 10 books a week or a month or whatever it might be, but do you know what's happening in the world today, yesterday? You know, do you know what article came out? Can you reference? certain things that build upon certain other things. You can also just strictly speak from lived experience. That can be a way to be an activist, to step into rooms where people may not look like you or believe as you, that's a form of, of activism. When I look at some of the commission gigs that I've done in the past, I've been in predominantly white rooms, all white rooms or non-black rooms. And my activism was simply speaking the voice of a black woman, a person of color in that space from my perspective. I remember um, I was at, asked to speak at the beginning of uh, the Women's March. It was before the march to the museum steps. We were doing a rally. And I know that a lot of people were divided around, well, you know, Women's March is only for white women. And I'm not even going. And, you know, and, and I um, am a part of different communities that feel very strongly about that. But I was like, I'm definitely not going to miss an opportunity to speak to us as, at, at large as women. But I'm also going to speak from the Black perspective. Because if we are all aligned, you know, and I have your ear, you will see the things that align in you and me. And you also get to hear my perspective, maybe in a way that you never have, maybe you don't have friends that look like me, think like me, act like me. So I would say, want to do the work, make sure you have your own mind and you study, you research on your own, like Buddha says, make sure it makes sense to you. I mean, I'm paraphrasing Buddha, but you know, pair or the, mm, that would be the Dalai Lama. Right, <laughs> Dalai Lama Buddha, you know what I meant, right? We freestyling today, y'all. This is off the dome, but you know, 
research things for yourself and then move forward with the work. You know, your sphere of influence could be your family, starting with them, seeing that impact. And also I did a lot of free work in the beginning of my career and I um, still hello. certain things for free. The free work? What? <laughs> you get a lot of free yeah, work. Yeah, yeah, you know, uh, you know. A lot, y'all. Yeah. Yeah. A whole lot. A lot. A lot. A lot. That a lot, made a lot, Ursula lot. turn her mute yeah. off. <laughs> Yes, because it's true. I think people think they're coming out the gate getting paid, but you got to be really about it, you know, to, to begin with, because I didn't mind doing things for free because I was, um, I was in line with what they were talking about. I wanted to be a part of it. I wanted to get my voice out there and like spread love, elevate people through all of that, you know, and I continued to hone my craft, you know, when it gets to the point where you're paying bills off of your art, that's the point where you know that you're really about that about that life you know what i mean that is not to undermine anyone who is um working right now and moonlighting as an artist you still are authentically an artist but when it gets down to the point where you can't do 10 gigs in a row for free because, because you are respected you enough do. known but, enough yeah because that's all the okay. only way that you take care of yourself or whoever else you're taking care of and whatever else is if you you have gigs you you you're, you're doing this work and you're getting paid so like understand that mm -hmm. understand that or don't yeah. understand it, but don't give me no flack about it, all right? And pay me. And pay no, it's me. true. It's and true. That, that, and and it's if we and if we decide to do something for free, because we always do, mm -hmm. okay? Let it be known. Yeah. It's always we have our yeah. own personal sliding scales too, because yeah. it starts with work yeah. that we do and the compassion in our hearts yes. and why we do it, you know, and that we love this art mm -hmm. and that we love um, you know healing our own traumas and helping our, our helping us with our shit and then helping yeah. others with theirs you know like this is this this is how we do this but yo you know what i'm saying we don't eat yeah. we don't eat vapors and air and stuff and, and artists have to argue out of all professions artists have to argue for all the time earth's like like that we should be paid or that we should be paid a certain amount or you know what i mean like you don't uh, pay a, a plumber by the flush or you don't like pay him after you see if he fixed the toilet or not. Like you pay that fee even for right. him to show up or her to show up or them to show up and fix that toilet. You know what I mean? I think that people have undermined, long undermined um, the, 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 the strength and the power of art to move mm -hmm. movements forward, to change minds to and keep hearts people and alive. Do you know how many people have exactly. come up to me, huh? And said, yo, you're this piece right here. This, you, that is like, that, yeah. that that that's yep. wild and so you know if you want to be about that you want to yep. do that you want to do that with your art you know what i'm saying then you better put your whole entire heart into it don't be out here trying to floss and see how many people you can all shock and amaze and impress i mean if you're impressive mm -hmm. you know like you'll probably be impressive if you do it all the way from your heart and with the most authenticity and sincerity you know that just comes naturally and then if you want to merge your art with you know doing some real work that people work you know that i don't know if that's like you know the jubilee school yeah. they, they they teach kids like they i don't know if they yeah. teach but they yeah. inspire okay so it's more yeah. it's more inspiring yeah. than teaching so open yourselves up to um receiving more information like that art that is activism art in general if you're not really receiving enough art you know not well i'm saying enough because yeah. you know i'm biased if you're not really right. receiving art um yeah. receive more art and then uh receive art that is about you know activating people and helping people and healing people and see how that makes you feel you know what i'm saying like just give it a try it might it might invigorate you, you might catch a fire you might change your life that's like remember you saying to us before you're like joy is a part of this revolution you know and it's just like it's not just about being radical you know it's about bringing out joy in this and i like i'm looking at our time and the one thing that i want to bring about is like when you talked about that we started talking about house music we started talking about how that made you feel and the message that you were providing people with that so we need to start delving into that or else we we gonna hit this hour without mm -hmm. talking about it and i didn't want to miss this story uh, thank you, Ginger. I love you for that. Thank you. Oh, man, I need an hour, but thank you for this little bit of time. Uh, you know, I have one of the first, the, the first thing I ever recorded was a house song with King Brit. 
It's called Supernatural. So how I got into the recording poetry thing at all is with house music. And house music is, you know, like, it's, it's a culture for me. It's a lifestyle. Um, it has been since, you know, since I was in college. And um, it's not just like, oh, you go out to the club, you know, just dance and go home. No, it's like the thing that has kept me up going, able to wake up, keep, keep, keep moving forward. I'm inspired to create. And um, so the fact that I got to be, you know, like a house music artist um, is crazy. <laughs> um, you know, so I'm, I'm thankful for the dream. Like we, gotta, we all have to sit down and really look at our lives and see where did our dreams actually come true while we're still complaining and asking for more dreams to come true. We first have to appreciate the ones that have come true. And um, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I got to remind myself of that. And so as I'm talking, yeah, so like, thank you for this because I would love for people to look up my house music catalog because I think a lot of people are like, oh, Ursula Rucker's a poet and she's done this and this. And a lot of people don't know about my house. Even people who, who are fans of my house tracks don't know about all my house stuff. Like, and I'm just saying house stuff to, it's electronic music. It's all different genres. It's drum and bass, house, um, uh, what do you call it? Um, ambient you know ambient this the ambient everything yo ambient soul ambient jazz ambient how all right your girl do it all look a john up i promise you it's gonna be a lot of stuff you going like something <laughs> and and tell your friends ursula rucker does house music ursula rucker been doing house music since 1990 for this is how Ursula Rucker started doing this recording poetry stuff is by recording a poem with house music with her homie King Brit and the rest is history. Uh, yeah, I, that you you just taking me back. I'm like, oh my God, King Brit. Like I remember those days, just walking out on the street, be a block party, everybody just out there. They're talking, singing, oh, going for it. The Philly, that's the, that's the Philly magic. It's a special place here. It's a special community. It of, is. And so much asking about art, like, it, I'm sorry, go ahead, Ursula. No, I was just saying, it's just a special place of like everything we've been talking about. All the questions you've asked, Ginger, uh, that that community, we, we, we have it right here. We're spoiled. Mm -hmm. We spoiled it up, yo. We, we are so... So they have it in Baltimore too, though. I know mad people in Baltimore doing this work on many levels. I've worked with them. I know Nina has too. So, you know, cause that's her, that's her place. But yeah, you know, like Philly, we sp we're unique. We're unique. We're I, I all the time. We are. I mean, it's not just cause we live here. You guys have to come and feel this flavor, but it, it really is. And someone's <laughs> asking us a question about that. So I think it's a perfect time to jump into it. Just to let everybody know, we're going to have about 15 minutes for Q&A, so if you do have questions, please throw them into the Q&A box, and we'll try to get to as many as possible. Uh, but the first person wanted to know if a geographical place influences your creative work. For example, if you were writing something about a neighborhood, is walking those streets inspiring? And see, then I tell you guys it's going to come up because I, I forgot to talk about the neighborhoods that Ursula's from and the neighborhoods that Nina's from because I think we feel like that's important. Like every neighborhood has a flavor, has a vibe. So let's try that one. Does that influence your creative work? Uh, for me, it's not so much about uh, where I am, um, like physically, but I just go inside, honestly. I have... Um, self-diagnosed eidetic memory which means like i can remember what i've seen where i was the temperature the feeling i had um so if i've been to a neighborhood already that i'm particularly writing about and i can't get to it it's about going inward and reimagining that space of course being in a space does help and if i had access to a space i was uh, writing about then i would uh, but a lot of times for me uh it's about the space i'm in myself so i oftentimes will headphones is better having that personal music instead of anything anyone else can access um lends itself a lot to my writing process more so yeah but i like to be outside near the water to write that's i mean for anything mm. that's my favorite yeah i like that. hey look i'm learning more about my homie that's not nice. <laughs> <laughs> um because you know fyi me and nina was texting before we 
even started came in here we was texting behind the scenes or whatever <laughs> you were, why, why are you, you wasting the words before you get up on here because we're <laughs> friends, friends. Because we're friends, friends. <laughs> that's right um, we had to do our little check-in yeah mm -hmm. But um, yeah. na neighborhood, I mean, so many things play in, but yeah, neighborhood is super important to me. I'm a Philly girl. Uh, you know, Philly is a Philly is a city of neighborhoods. <laughs> I live in Germantown, you know. Um, so, you know, like Germantown is so loved by the people who live here in Germantown. We reserve yeah. the right to complain about it when we feel <laughs> complaining about it, but it doesn't yeah. mean we don't love it, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, you know, like just, just the city in just the city in general. Uh, yeah. plays so much into my writing. Uh, I might, I might hear the, I might hear the young boys on the on the expressway off in the distance in the summertime on the dirt bikes and whatever. And oh my god, all, all of a sudden I'm writing, so, you know, like so. It's like yes, yeah. yeah. I mean, I should go ahead or sorry, finish. No, no, no. I was okay. just, I, it's it's just like yeah, you know, watching my sons grow, what they have to battle with here, you know, growing up in a city like this that's rough around the edges, you know, yeah. as young black men, and so yeah, it figures into a lot. I, it, it's probably in it's probably in my stuff when I don't even know it's in there. <laughs> it's all over everything. Yeah. No. Yeah. I I just to clarify. No, I agree with you. I think for me it, it works. Um, in the reverse in terms of what you're saying, like I'll be somewhere and be inspired by it. But if I'm like writing about something, do I go to that place? If I can, I do, if not, I don't. But you're right, I mean, there's so much stimulation. And yes, Philly, like there's a reason I stayed here for 18 years. Do y'all mad, do y'all mad, put it together. And so um, <laughs> I'm in a highly gentrified girl. I'm in a highly gentrified neighborhood, right? You hear the like ice cream truck going by, but then I'm seeing neighborhood bars come down. I'm seeing them redo like, you know, the streets everywhere. Now I can ride my bike. Stuff that wasn't here when it was just black residents and old Philadelphians. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, there's so many different layers to gentrification that people don't talk about, right? People talk about gentrification and they think, oh, young white people making a certain amount of money, X, Y, and Z, but there are brown gentrifiers as well, right? You know, there are people from other states and, you know, countries, whatever it might be. Like my particular block, we're like as a hodgepodge with so many different backgrounds and experiences so that's added a different color for me because I was real puffed up about this gentrification thing you know um and I still am but having met my neighbors a certain you know group um the way that we align and realizing many of them are artists and contractors and things of that sort those are the ones I vibe with but the ones that don't speak mm -hmm. and it's been my block for over a decade like that's what I have a problem with so yeah so right, exactly. So like there's there's a double-edged sword in terms of environment, right? So like there are places that I feel more safe to, to go at night. Let's say I do want to go for a walk and venture out to write. Like there's a there's a bench now and a shelter at the bus stop. Is that just right. a sign for your black ass to stand and wait regardless of the weather? You know what I mean? It's a bittersweet combination. And that's something that um, if it hasn't come about yet in my writing, I'm sure we'll find its way into it, you know? Well, we'll take the perks. You can leave your whack-ass exclusion at home. We'll take the perks. You can leave your whack-ass exclusion back in whatever city or state yes. or what have you all because we don't, we're not like, you know, I stand in places. Look, that's a whole nother. Let's have a gentrification conversation because I need to vent. Yeah. <laughs> Cause this hurts my feelings. Right. It hurts my feelings. I am. Uh, I am like, please. I need to get into. I need to be part of a gentrification conversation. Like, Absolutely. And I, go ahead, Ginger. I'm sorry. No, no, no. I, you, girl. You know, I'm just sitting there with looking at the cute at our time. Like, what are we gonna squeeze into? No, we gonna we gonna we gonna rock out. We gonna get it done. We gonna get it done. I'm also really excited with what questions folk um have. You know what I mean? Like, we can you know uh build with everybody but but i'm not going to throw it on you all at once but somebody has asked and and i want to do it i'm not forcing you all to do it uh -uh. someone has asked that after we finish these questions that one of you or maybe both of you just like ride us out of this with a poem i guess they they want to leave on a good note you don't want a spiritual note so just give me some time to think about what you might want to you know come up with leave us with uh, somebody but you know, we can go on to the next question <laughs> while you while you meditate right. on that. 
Right, right. But somebody wants to know how, and I'm, I'm going to say it the way they put it on, how you are as revolutionary sisters making it through this time of the pandemic safely and sanely. First. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, I could start and I'll be brief and then I, I could lob it to you. Go ahead. So safely and sanely. Okay. So starting with sanity, uh, for me, when all of this started to go down, like I'm one of those people who is extremely calm in the midst of everybody else going crazy. I have some kind of energy inside me that balances whatever I'm experiencing with the exact opposite. And I know that I can't make rational decisions if I'm worried or I'm coming from a fear-based place. So I had looked up and this one thing was going around where it was talking about like, first, give yourself at least a week or two to adjust to the fact that life is gonna be different. Do not try to work as usual. Figure out what the new normal is gonna be. So I took that advice to heart. I slowed everything to a stop, to a Nina stop, you know, not even a spec stop. And um, I started to think about how long we might be in for this. I had been reading the news. Um, and, and seeing what other countries were doing, what they were experiencing. I had some friends abroad and was checking in with them about it. Uh, and then I started to come up with a plan for myself. I allowed myself, um, I was averaging, I'll tell Earth this too, I was averaging a meltdown per week in the first month, you know, like intentional and unexpected. Like, you know, the first one came on me. I had to get my mind right, like, okay, so let's figure out how you feel about death. And like, you know, like I thought I might, you know, get a chance to like have a little more fun before I had to think about meeting my maker, but it's something that I decided to um, gently bring to the front for me because right now so much is a threat to all our lives, black, white, and everything in between. So Nina chose to get real about like, okay, what are you doing that aligns and doesn't align with your purpose and with how you want to be ending things out? Because at any time, you know, you just don't know. I mean, God willing, there's many more years of great, healthy life for me, but at the same time, my biggest goal for Nina is to never come from a place of fear. So how can I steal myself against fear? And that's like, okay, the worst case scenario. And this for me is like catching a Corona and dying, being black and dying for jogging, for breathing. I don't know, for trying to get a Lucy, you know, shit like that. Um, and so I got into that. And I also started connecting more deeply with like my beliefs around like, you know, spirit and soul. But also started rocking out. I made a list of albums that I've been meaning to listen to, you know, start to. That I've just made and no Spotify is not paying me, but I'm just saying like Spotify, y'all. Um, so I would make playlists. Um, I would write down artists I wanted to um, research. And then I decided to put myself in school. Once I took that break, um, I always decided being a film major media person um, to pursue something funny and light to watch, something that makes me think and something that's critical. And then like, I, just because I like crime procedurals and stuff like that, mysteries, you know, a little bit of that. And then also reading something, you know, just having a practice and starting to build in discipline. And then also finding ways to implement things into my lifestyle that before my excuse was I didn't have time for. So for me, I've taken the time to just slow everything down and, to, and I got more in tune with myself and my body, like that little voice inside you that everybody talks about, the one I talk about as well, could actually be heard. I realized when I was eating too much, like, oh, girl, you ain't hungry. You're not hungry anymore. You know what I mean? I realized when it was time to go to bed, like, because we're so wired and tuned in and just all the time in America, we're overstimulated. We don't have time to get in touch with ourselves. Now, I know I have the benefit of living in a very quiet household. I don't have any children at the moment. You know, none of those things. Um, but I also was able to get a quiet that I've not accomplished in quite some time. Um, so that's how I stay saying that. And I have something called Self Care Sundays. My homegirl, Erica Rhapsody Hawthorne Manning, um, you know, taught me about the importance of taking some time for yourself throughout the week. So whether it's six hours spread over seven days, or whether it's a half day, or something you agree with with your partner or roommates, you have got to take time where you're not responsible for anyone. You don't have to anyone, if possible, guys, like talk to your children um, and just unplug. You know, they, they have a saying and I'm going to finish up because I'm, I'm a little long winded, but this is really important because I think joy and self care go hand in hand. Find joy, something that makes you laugh, because th that's the refueling as well. It can't all be marching in the streets, which I've done plenty of and being exhausted and mad and pissed off and triggered. It's got to be wow, That was funny or 
man, I had a good laugh or I saw a friend or I, you know, found a way to connect or just re-believe in, in humanity, you know? So I think that's for me, the biggest thing, you know, music, self-care, <laughs> getting in touch. Okay. Wow. That's, that was, <laughs> I, I was oh, I, no, yeah, I was listening to you and also thinking, you know, it's a heavy question. Whoever asks is, it's definitely, you know, it, it challenged you, like, how honest do, how honest do I want to be right now? As honest um, as possible, we are all, all going through this, and I think people want to know they're not doing yes, it. get free. They're not doing it alone. I think that's the, that's the point, you know, that's what's kept me sane is, uh, yeah, expressing myself, um, not being afraid to say that I'm feeling dark on a, on a you know, really dark on the inside, you know, not e even for fear. Cause I work, you know, I'm concerned about other people too. I'm always thinking like, okay, somebody who's also feeling dark. I don't want to, sometimes you got to just let it go, you know, cause you cannot control how other people are going to receive your thoughts and emotions and whatever anyway. Um, but yeah, so just to keep expressing, um, I, I, you know, my haiku writing practice keeps me alive. My, uh, just poetry and gen just creating in general keep, keeps me alive. Okay, has kept me alive, continues to keep me alive. But in, in this moment where I'm feeling like if I'm feeling so downtrodden, you know, and I have so many times during this, because we got we're dealing with our own stuff we were already handling in our lives, which may have been super heavy already. And then, you know, so now we have all this other stuff. So it's a it's, it's a lot. And, um, you know, I just keep I, I like all the, if I could tell people every day and they could believe this. If I'm doing it, you can do it. If they knew what I really meant by that, if they knew all the stuff that I experience and what I go through, what I got to handle, how I don't want to get up some, some mornings more than I would like to share, you know, um, it's me to stay to stay creative and sane. Hello. Mm -hmm. So, so you know, this poetry is like this multi-purpose, baby. <laughs> Get into it. I'm gonna keep it there with you, Ursula, because someone made a a, a good um, point. They were just saying for them, poetry is art made of words, and with it, they express the things that are unspeakable and that save their lives. And they just wanted to know if either poet could relate to this. And I think you're already delving into that, Ursula. You know. Yeah, <laughs> it's like can I relate? Mm -hmm. Oh, oh yeah. my goodness! Poetry, just oh, thank you, whoever, whatever, <laughs> however, this came into my into my being. Oh my goodness, it grows and changes my life all of the time. It has changed my life. It reads it. it oh you know um i just I, I i love it so much it's just uh i can't i can't even really explain everything that it is to me uh yeah it's just like i'm so happy to have it in my life you know when i'm not ha and i don't fancy myself a happy person you, i don't really know i don't know many people who if anybody could go back in there personal history they have with me and go back anytime they've ever heard me said I feel happy <laughs> I'm so happy <laughs> that's not really that's not that's not my thing you know we all have we're just you know we are who we are whatever um I think I'm able to I'm, 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 I'm able to bring joy with these with these poems I write yo isn't that amazing that even when I wrote these poems because I wasn't feeling joy at all sometimes. And I was trying to get at that and get rid of that. Or, you know, that I can give that and then help somebody else feel joy. Yo, that's magic. Mm -hmm. Tell me that's not magic. Nina. No, that's not. Take, yo, take this ball. Yo, I, Tell yeah. me that's not magic. No, it is. It is magic. And I mean, I think that's where I get joy as well. Like when I help other people you know, towards the journey of finding their own voice and their freedom. I mean, poetry absolutely saved my life and literally and figuratively. I, I remember by the, by the age of nine, I was just presenting like this crazy temper. I was just angry all the damn time, just mad, um, you know, but bright, right? 
So I started writing and I would write and write and write and write and write until I got all those emotions and feelings out like they needed to be outside of my body on the page. And then I felt at ease. You know, everybody needs an outlet. Some people it's the gym. Sometimes it's physical for other people. For me, it is a purging of what is inside my spirit. So yes, it is art made into words. Um, Yes, it is like, you know, expression, uh, you know, to the nth degree, right? Because poetry can be anything from the simple words to the deeply intricate, to the references we might make or anything in between. But for me, having that outlet to get me through really saved my life. And I think also like, there are times where I would be in so much pain, I couldn't write. And I couldn't believe that I couldn't write. And I wish that I was the type of poet that like in the middle of crying, I'm writing. I am deep in those emotions, honey. I am underneath the earth, under the water, honey, with those feelings. I have to be at least, you know, like find the air before I can write anything these days when it comes to that. Um, but yeah, poetry is it, you know, whether you perform it for anybody else or nobody else. Um, it definitely is, is a way to stay sane um, in the midst of all that's happening and a way to understand yourself for yourself, to yourself. And it's fun. And it's and fun. fun. And it's fun. And, it's fun. and, and I freestyle now and I rap. So rapping is cool too. When we you know? perform, when we get to do, listen, that's like that, that, that's, that's a your thrill. Friend. That is a thrill that is like no other thrill when you elevate. I mean, when you, oh my goodness, that connection with, oh, I yeah. miss it. It hurts me to my heart. That's my this week. I am definitely feeling how deeply it hurts me that I have not been able to perform live and do this this thing that we do. Um, it, it's a it's a definite loss. But you know, like perhaps we need to feel the loss. You know, mm-hmm. uh, to really look at and think about what it is that we do and the impact that it has in our lives and others. And then when we move forward, and we will move forward. Don't ask me how, but we will, because we're, look, we're all awake and alive in this call right now, and we're doing this right now, so we, you know, let's, let's, let's keep going. We will move forward, but yeah, when we, as we move forward, and when we move forward, we'll be looking at it with new eyes and new appreciation, and that's cool. I'm good with that. I love how you guys are closing out these answers, because they really are connecting to the next questions it's like oh just flowing right into what the next person wants to know about but someone's asking if you feel obligated to use your platform as artists to speak about issues you care about or can you just write create for art's sake is it Um, okay to do that i'll be really quick and say i i never feel obligated to do anything i feel called yes i do feel Mm -hmm. called Uh, but that's just because it already aligns you know what i mean um You know, as I was studying, we talked about the idea of art for art's sake and how that's something that wasn't really readily available to, you know, artists of color over time because we had so much to discuss just about all the things we were overcoming or having to prove ourselves and our beauty and our amazingness in the midst of so much oppression. Um, I believe in both, personally. I am a lover of art in all forms from all different races of people, ages, backgrounds, like it's, it's, it's to me the hilt of human expression, like I'm artist at the core. And, uh, you know, for me, my art for art's sake, which probably wouldn't even be called that, um, is, you know, whenever I write love poetry or infatuation or any of those things, um, writing those two, you know, but I feel like, how could you not be talking about what's going on in the world right now? Like, how could you not? Like, yes, like we could talk about something else and that could be cool, but like, like, it's like, finally, a lot of us are behind the wheelbarrow or with Sisyphus and we pushing this rock up the hill together. I can't be over there playing in the sandbox. Like we all got to put our hands behind the rock and push it up, you know, but I feel called to and not obligated. You all poetic and shit. Did y'all hear that? Uh, uh, excuse me. Thank you. I was like, oh, we hitting the mythology now. Oh, excuse me. I'm crying. <laughs> Yo, we, po- we post up in here. Don't play. <laughs> we smart. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was amazing. Look, I saw the word flash across my, it was beautiful. I saw it with the capital S. It was fun. Thank you <laughs> for that. I saw the ball and everything. Thank you. I did that See? for you. Yeah. It's the, it's the imagery. It's the imagery too. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, I mean, if you want to create art for your own sake, your own lively, your own uh, peace and wellness, and you don't want to share with any, and that's like, you know, that, that's, that's cool. 
uh, if you're a human being, however, mm -hmm. hey, you ain't saying nothing or doing nothing, check your motherfucking self. Yeah. Do whatever you want with your art. Mm -hmm. But with your humanity, hmm, what you doing? I say. And, but, but, but if you're an artist with a voice and you're a black artist with a voice, or if you just an artist with a voice, but I'm a, you know what I'm saying? I want to just fine tune it down to a black artist with a voice, you know, and you got some kind of platform or whatever, and you ain't really saying shit, check yourself too. How's that? That is, I mean, someone just said, they're like, this is not only a glorious talk, but this is the laugh out loud kind of joy that they needed. They're like, they're going to share it with all their tribes. Yes. It is a life that's what's up. Them, yes. Right? Yes. And now that you guys have gotten all these accolades, somebody <laughs> is going to have to draw straws to figure out who is going to give us all this power behind the words to push us into the weekend. Who's, who's oh. doing it? Who's giving us the poem? We should who's... both do a little something. A little something, okay. yeah. A little something. I'm, let me sit back and just get myself all ready for it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, I like, I don't know how much time do we have. I don't want to do a we super long thing, but I just need to know how much time. We are at 640 and we, our participants are still hanging on. So okay. please. I will whoever, oh, all right. Well, whoever wants to hang on for the poems then. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about poetry and activism. Um, 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 and, and, and if you're not ready for, or you're just not interested in the revolution, Nina heard this one before, but what, everything we talking about lends itself to this. So I want to, I want to do this. Um, if you're not Thank ready you. for, you're just not interested in the revolution. The Waffle House is now taking applications. I, saw the sign in the window. Maybe you'll see the signs and stop hiding. Stop seeking refuge in the unsafe, peaceless places. Stop refusing to be enlightened. Stop willingly accepting what the powerless that be tell you, show you, force feed you, inject into you. Please don't accept the lies, oh man, <laughs> the denial, the new and improved bamboozle, the mediocrity, the mediocre, the mediocrity. A revolution is a movement fueled by great love, great anger, great need and desire and requirement for change. Mediocrity does not and will not figure into the revolution equation. Black, brown, indigenous folk throughout the diaspora are destined for greatness because of or despite or no matter our struggles, our journeys, our stories. We are destined for greatness, so be great. Don't settle for employment, strive, seek, demand, empowerment not for the purpose of oppression slash control, but to transform self, family, community, nation, planet, and transform, revolt, move, change, be enlightened, be empowered, be great, and don't forget to teach the little children to transform, revolt, move, change, be enlightened, be empowered, be great. And I'm gonna try to sing it one time because it's a mantra. And if you remember the words, you can adopt it as yourself. You can, you can say it as a mantra. Or you can look the song up, which is called Call to Axiom. You look a jaw up. Transform, revolt, move, change. Be enlightened, be empowered, be great. And don't you let me find out that you forgot to teach the little children to get yeah, transform, revolt, move, change, 
Be enlightened. Be empowered. Be great. Lord, the new and improved bamboozle. Right, girl. Yes, yes, yes. Sis. Okay, thank you. I'm looking over here. I'm like, oh man, I forgot that I thought I was gonna. So I'm gonna do something that you didn't I forget. Stop lying. You didn't. So I, you know what? Yo, I like this. I like this cute little routine. Go ahead. I, I was looking to see if I was gonna read something newer, but I'm gonna just go off the dome and do a little section of something because seems like we have like a widespread audience. Um, and Urs, you heard this before. Maybe you have Ginger, maybe a lot of y'all or none of y'all have. This will be, poetry is not a luxury. And this kind of brings everything full circle. Um, Audre Lorde wrote an essay by that same title that spoke to me very deeply. This is an oldie but goodie. I wrote this in college. Um, and shout out also to James Baldwin. I, in my echo chamber, I can't imagine there's anyone who doesn't know who James Baldwin is, but when I think about poetry and activism, James Baldwin. Look him up if you do not know already. You gotta know him. This ain't no Love Jones shit. There will be no incense lit. You won't be able to snap to this, clap to this without getting fat from this. Raise a black fist while wearing coffee house black to this. Push your ego back for this because we're running out of time. This ain't no Afro jiggy meeting of the minds. No dreadlock rasta jazzer size. No art beyond the people peeking through elite peepholes. Close my confidential preferential treatment equals. I fit the stereotype, so I got a right to be on the mic. Type entitlements. Feel yourself in silence. I wrote for so long that I wonder where the title went. Took the last of vital wind and spoke to Mother Nature's heartbeat, praying that the Lord would part me like a Red Sea and allow my intentions to pass through to safety. If I'm not worthy, then take me. And if I can't sleep a dream, and don't bother to wake me, because poetry is not a luxury. So until it blends with the wind, every breath is cutting me deep to the core of my mustard seed. Can't catch up, so instead I bleed. And sometimes I feel like a childless mother. See, my rhymes died in the arms of its lover. So I run for cover and give birth to stillborn thoughts while everyone around me is choosing to abort. And everyone before them just wanted to get off with no attention to racing consciousness to the power of Black abstract thoughts made into real say i got some heat on my sheets and i'm not here to wordplay a verse tucked into my skirt and i'm ready to spray and if you fall fast i do my broadcast on a five second delay 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 fuck the iron i'm gonna strike all the materials hot look one shot with some flow on the rocks yo I shot shoot on mute like I'm trained by the cops. I stop watches and shot clocks. Raise chakras like livestock. Text fiend with a dream. I've been meaning to detox because you can't elevate with no time. So I shot time from the sky so it, it could no longer fly and it fell with a third a little dirt in its eye and time was an all with its jaw open. The earth stands still while I make revolutions around the sun to my feet are that of black oak and revolutions become revelations as I relate the sensations of the souls of black folk. I work the spine into the back rope. My book cried for mercy said I abused my right to custody. I said this is the life you were born into. Only soldiers in this cavalry. The weak and left behind they only shine with shattered smiles you see. Poetry is not a luxury. So until it blends with the wind, every breath is suddenly deep between the substance of things hopeful and the evidence of things not seen. And I can't see beyond what my soul perceives. So if my spirit's not talking, I refuse to take heed. They said this mission was impossible. But I'm going to carry out my charge and serve 100 years in solitude. Birth warriors in the interval. My sentimental sentinels reserve the shells of former selves and survive on my own fossil fuel. And with what's left, I'll gas up my jets. Because how could I ever be afraid of death? Because I'm a kamikaze poet. I fly these words straight into your soul and sit there with them and make sure it explodes. With birth comes this ardor. I guess you would call me a martyr because I'm willing to die for my claws. The passion behind these predicates give reason for... Pause and take a breath now. There's no time for death now. So I spend eternities in the solar system until my soul's wisdom is touched down. Get ready for the countdown. In 32, 31, 30 seconds, this message will self-destruct, but scatter my dust across the galaxy. And I'll come back as a rock, star, tree. And what you thought was the wind will be air rushing to find me. Plant me in the earth six feet and I rise, see. I lily, I lilac, I rose. I resurrected in the form of prose. I be Mother Nature's scribe. 
when unfaithful pens keep running out on me, it's a wonder I'm still alive. So I keep summonsing my veins to red pages. So these ain't just rhymes, they're bloodlines. So that's just an excerpt of poetry is not a luxury. I, I think I think that was perfect because it kind it 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 summates every, it sums up everything that we've been talking about. You know, like these poems are a prayer. You say these poems like prayers. He said, or if I said a poem, however, you know, in a moment, um, depending on what's going on in your life, yeah, it's, 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 like, it's like they do what prayers do. You know, they do what prayers do. Yeah, absolutely. I absolutely. can't think yeah. of a better note to in this one. And thank you to incredible women for being here. Victoria, please, I won't want to waste this moment of meditation for everybody. Let's play you, these beautiful Victoria. people out. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Ginger. Nina, you. I'm going to text you, yo. Wait, what? I'm going to text you. Yo, 